Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video and today is for something a little bit different. Now the F1 Esports series does begin tonight and I'm really really looking forward to this obviously. Season 2 as such obviously we've already had the Pro Draft earlier on in the year but obviously tonight is the first time you get to see the proper racing and today I thought I'd sort of make a bit of a different video and I want to do some sort of predictions and discussions about all of the driver lineups. Now probably either tomorrow or Friday I'll make sort of a video talking about the first event you know I really sort of want to focus and make a few videos on each one, you know, sort of more from an analyst, from a sort of an analy analytic point of view. Is that even a word? I'm not too sure. An analyze sort of point of view for this. But yeah, today I sort of thought I'd run through uh, all the teams, you know, why, who I think, uh, some of them haven't quite announced that I've seen anyway. Uh, some of them haven't quite announced who they've actually got driving tonight. So I'm sort of going to make a couple of predictions there as well. Um, so yeah, I think we'll sort of just get into this now. First of all, just one thing I'd like to say quickly for fun. If I say, you know, someone isn't quite there, like up to standard, I'm not saying in any way they're bad, you know. Um, it, it, I'm not trying to come off as someone that goes, oh, that guy's trash because they're all just stupidly, stupidly quick on the game. You know, they're all absolutely phenomenal on the whole. So, you know, if I say someone isn't up to standard, I'm not saying they're bad. They'd still definitely run rings around me. And I'd like to think, no, I'm fairly good. At the Formula One games, but you know you got to think about how sort of a high quality area this is at the moment. So this isn't meant to be sort of like chatting shit about anyone or anything like that. You know, I do honestly. There's no team I sort of want to see do badly or anything. I, 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 it's sort of one of those weird things where there's no one I sort of want to see. There's no team there that I look at and think, yeah, I'm not really a fan of that team. I, I sort of quite like everyone on the whole. So I think yeah, the best thing to do straight away is sort of just run through obviously each of the lineup now there is obviously only 18 drivers competing technically tonight and we only 18 cars obviously ferrari yeah i think the less said about ferrari the better but yeah obviously they're not showing up or doing anything with it which is a bit sad but hey ho, that means that obviously every other team has still you know is still involved so first of all then we'll sort of run through the order obviously on the whole now at the time of recording this you know it is uh, just for 11 o'clock in the morning at the time of recording this and i'm sure a few more things will sort of get announced over the course of the day you know, going into it this evening. But yeah, uh, for me right now, I'll sort of explain what I've seen and what I haven't. But yeah, let's move on then in to the very first lineup. And obviously, we'll just sort of run down the order as you would expect. So Mercedes, first of all, then their lineup for this season will be Brendan, Danny, Harry Jacks, and Patrick Crouch, I think is how you pronounce it. I don't know if I've got that quite right on the holder. Now, I think for the first one, I'm going to have to say it'll be probably be, you know, there'll be no point in not putting Brendan in there. You know, he's really, really quick. Obviously, he's proved last year he won't sort of crack under the pressure as well. Obviously, winning last year's championship as well. And alongside him, I'm going to put Formula Danny. Uh, I think obviously on the whole, he's, you know, very, very quick as well. I think in AOR last season, he was probably one of the closest to Brendan on the whole, obviously, on the PC split. Obviously, Brendan did end up really sort of dominating that split as well obviously just goes to show that, you know, the Formula 1 esports wasn't quite just a fluke or anything like that. Although I don't think many people sort of really thought it was. I think it was more just the fact that people didn't quite expect him to win it on the whole. You know, when you look at, obviously, in AOR sort of up to that point, you know, AOR is usually a good benchmark for these sorts of things. You know, you look at, obviously, people like Sally that had pretty much run rings around him in like F1 2016 and things. You know, he just hadn't quite been there, but obviously he just turned it up to 11, really sort of got the grind on. And was able to get right up there on the whole seat. I don't think Harry Jacks or Patrick Crutch will be racing in this one. A bit of a bold statement saying obviously that Harry Jacks won't be. But when you consider how strong that lineup is. I do think that Brendan and Formula Danny are just a tiny bit better. It wouldn't surprise me if they did run that. But that is sort of my predictions for this one. Moving on to Red Bull though. It is uh, only Yoni and uh, Graham Carroll for Red Bull if I'm not mistaken. I th I'm pretty certain it is just those two. And I think for me that's pretty easy obviously. If it is, if, if there is someone else, I'm pretty certain, I, well, I would most likely be going with Johnny and Graham Carroll anyway. Johnny, I think, is honestly one of my predictions to probably win the series on the whole. He is just nuts at every game he plays. It's actually just ridiculous. He can just go from F1 to Project Cars to Race Room to pretty much anything he feels like and just be stupidly quick on the whole. We'll sort of get down into like, my predictions for, you know, for the actual championship later on in this video. Next up, uh, obviously, Force India I've gone with. So we've got uh, Marcel Kiefer, uh, Mad Sorensen, and Fabrizio Donoso Delgado. I love saying that name. It's, it's brilliant. On the whole, I'm going to have to say, I, I can't imagine them not putting Donoso in there for this. Actually, I think they've already announced it, haven't they? It is Donoso and Marcel Kiefer, which would, if, if it was me, it would probably be the two I'd go with as well. You know, there's no point not putting Donoso in there, ranked second 
last season. It would just be crazy not to put him in there. And Marcel Kiefer as well, I think, is probably a strong second seat as well. It'll be interesting to see he see how he fares this season. Obviously, now he's sort of, you know, last year he hadn't really done any sort of online racing up to the esports event. And now, obviously, now he's sort of emerged in that world and everything. It'll be interesting to see how he fares this year around. Soon, obviously, last year he didn't even get to the finals of the F1 esports. And then, obviously, Force India sort of picked him up anyway, which was just a little bit strange, in my personal opinion. I, I, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying he's, he's not deserving of it, but obviously, I thought he didn't even make it to the finals. I thought it was quite surprised that they picked him up. Next up is Williams. Now, I, from what I've seen, I don't think they've confirmed their lineup just yet, but they consist of Timp, uh, obviously Tino Nakarainen, or however you want to pronounce his name. That Timp, mate, you're brilliant, but please change your name. Um, then you've got Alvaro Caraton, I think is his name. Uh, 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 Spaniard, for what I guess. And Alex Hanses, I think, is their third guy. Which, honestly, before I checked Twitter, just before I recorded this video... I honestly didn't know who he was. I still really don't know who he is, in all honesty. If any of you guys do know who he is, please leave it down in the comments as well. It would be greatly, greatly appreciated so I can know sort of who he is on the whole. But yeah, I'm not 100% sure about that lineup, but I'm probably going to have to put Timp and Carrotton in that lineup, unless, you know, I have just completely missed Alex Hansers from that lineup for some weird reason. But yeah, I think Timp, obviously, they picked him for the F1 Esports Tino. Uh, I think, obviously, as the first pick, you know, they're not going to be that bold and then just not use him for the very first race on the whole. And I think Carrotton will probably join him. As I said, I don't know anything about uh, Alex Hansers, so unfortunately I can't really comment. And that's why I've sort of gone with Carrotton. It's a bit more of a safe bet. Then we'll move over to Toro Rosso. And they've actually got three drivers for this. Uh, Freddie Rasmussen, Patrick Holtzman, and Chem Bollock Bassi. Overall now, uh, the only reason I know that it's Rasmussen and Holtzman is Chems actually tweeted out earlier on, about 10 minutes before I re was recording this, saying that he won't be racing tonight. He hasn't been able to practice enough. Uh, his rig, like the rigs that obviously they're all using, they've all been sent one to practice with. His is still stuck in customs in Turkey, so he hasn't been able to put the practice in. And you're like, fair enough. That seems sensible. Holtzman uh, was the only guy that like him and Yoni Tomala were like constantly, you know, two, three seconds quicker than anyone else on the leaderboards as well, so I'm not so surprised that obviously Holtzman is absolutely nuts. And Freddie Rasmussen obviously has done quite a bit everywhere in recent times. Obviously he does race uh, with um, Sebastian Job and um, Isaac Price, which unfortunately both made it to the eSports event, but unfortunately neither of them were able to get through on the whole year. Freddie Rasmussen obviously races in uh, iRace and Blancpain GT with those guys, and I'm sure he'll be very, very quick here as well. As you would expect, I think he was ranked, like, he obviously he made it to the finals last year, but I'm not 100% sure where he ranked in the end. And obviously Patrick Holtzman, as I said, very, very quick guy as well. Now, next up then is Haas, and this one is fairly sort of simple on the whole. You've got Michael Schmidl, Magic Michael, I think he's usually known as, on the online world, obviously a Team Redline driver and uh, Virtual GP as well, although I know he did very, very well in the Project Cars World Rally Cross event in the A1 ring in Austria. Well, not the A1 ring, actually, but the A1, I think it was called the A1 Esports event. Whatever that was, where it was like Project Cars and League of Legends, if I'm not mistaken, over there. And obviously, he is joined uh, by Martin Stefanko as well. Sort of a weird lineup uh, when you look at it from sort of like a normal standpoint, but then when you actually dig deeper into it, the, the guy that was picking the drivers for Hass has actually raced with those guys for years as well. So once you see that, it's not all too surprising. Now, obviously, Smithle uh, he's dominating the Virtual GP this year. He dominated like the first half of last year's Virtual GP, but then Stefanko came back. And got him right at the very end. Now, Stefanko was actually picked first at the Pro Draft, which I thought was quite surprising. You know, Magic Michael is, well, Michael Schmidl is absolutely, he's like, he's like Yoni Tomalu. He's just nuts on whatever he drives on the whole. So it was quite a surprise to see Stefanko get picked over him. So I think that'll be interesting to see how those two fare against each other. You know, they, they're both from Czechoslovakia, if I'm not mistaken. So obviously, they've got quite a strong little growing esports scene over there with obviously things like the Virtual GP and things like that. You know, so it's going to be interesting to see how those two fare against each other on the whole in this event, obviously with how much they just race with each other everywhere. Next up then is McLaren, and they have got Bonacuis, Oli Pakala, and Enzo Bonito. Now, I know they actually did a race at the McLaren Technology Center yesterday at the time of recording this, and from what they were saying, you know, all three of those guys were so, so close in terms of, obviously, their pace and everything like that, but uh, I think it's Bono, uh, Bonacuis, and Oli Pakala for this one. Enzo Bonito is not racing this one. I'd be highly surprised if we don't see him race in the next one anyway, but it might only be for like one or two races. It won't be quite as many. I would imagine it'll probably be Bono doing the most for those guys. You know, he's proven in the past, you know, he, obviously he's, he's renowned for winning the Vegas E-Race 
as well, isn't he? Um, obviously, in controversial stands, it appeared in the end. But yeah, he'll uh, probably be doing most of the work for those guys. But obviously, I don't know what their pace is. Everyone's keeping their cars, obviously, very, very close to their chest, as you would expect on the hobby. I think Bono and Ollie, well, Bono and Ollie will be racing this time. I'd imagine Bono will be doing most of the work, but I think Enzo would also obviously be showing him as well. Now, now we move on to Sauber, and I know this one's obviously quite of a fan favourite on the whole. You've got Salah and you've got Sonic as well, but Sauber have gone with a weird sort of strategy for this one. They've actually changed it up between the races tonight. Now, I know there's meant to be three races tonight. The only confirmed from what I saw the first two races, though, so I know it's going to be Salah and uh, Alert for the first one, obviously at Australia, and then it's going to be Salah and Sonic for the second one. Now, I think that is probably the wisest move to go with, um, obviously, in the I can only base on past experience from what I've seen, but obviously Salah is consistently, you know, the quickest out of the three, you know, by... It, it, it's not a clear-cut, you know, half a second gap or whatever, but he is just always that clear-cut bit quicker than Alert and Sonic. So, obviously, I'm not surprised that we see him. You know, Sauber, I use him as many times as they possibly can, and obviously, I don't blame them for that. It makes perfect sense for them to do so. But switching up, I think, is sort of like a weirdly sort of clever gamble on the whole by Sauber, because that obviously means that... Alert can just sweat Australia. You know, he can just put bang him, race him, after race him, after race him, after race him around there. And obviously, Sonic can just do the same for China. Just put race him, after race him, after race him there. So it is a bit of an interesting strategy by those guys to sort of go with that on the whole. But I think that could prove very, very successful on the whole for those guys. And obviously, obviously, well, they've confirmed it, so we know who's going to be racing when. We don't know who's going to be racing for round three, though, for those guys, which will be interesting to see. Might be Alert and Sonic, but I'd be surprised if they're not going to try and use Sally. You know, he's just so quick overall as well. And then we move on to the final team at Renault Vitality. Obviously, they've just announced... Uh, Vitality, even, sorry. I've just announced they moved back into CSGO as well, which I find is quite interesting on the whole. But their team is Sven Zerner, Kimi Larson, and James Doherty, obviously, Tierra Limitless, or um, Veloce Limitless, as he's known on, you know, sort of the eSports platform as well. And I think for this one, I'm going to say Sven and Kimi. Now, obviously, Sven's on it. It just seems sensible to put him in there. You know, he's just nuts. He came fifth last year, if I'm not... No, sorry, third last year, even, at the F1 eSports uh, event as well. So, I think, you know, it'd be sensible to put him in there. Kimi Larson as well. I know he's got previous ties with the runner as well. Uh, obviously, he raced in Formula Runner over the last few years as well. So, I would be quite surprised not to see him. Potentially, we could see... Uh, Rano sort of do what we saw with uh, Sauber, where they like they switch up between the two races, but obviously I don't know right now. They haven't actually confirmed that, or they haven't confirmed their lineup anywhere that I've seen as well, so that's why I've sort of gone with those two. Now, I know JD actually beat Kimi in the race that they did last year, obviously round three on Xbox One, obviously, in Spain. Obviously, that was a very wet race, and obviously JD did that one on a wheel, so... Eh, sorry, he did that one on the pad, even. So, yeah, maybe, you know, he's not... Yeah, I know he's really quick on the wheel as well. But I think Kimi Larson will be very, very strong there. Unfortunately for him, he only made it into F2 on PC, which I thought was a little bit strange. And I think he's dominated the opening two rounds of the season as well. Yeah, so a little bit weird on that one. But, yeah, I think Kimi will probably be racing tonight. You know, he's so, so athletic and everything like that. You know, he's really sort of... Well, I know he's always tried to keep fit on the whole. So it is quite interesting with how much of that he's sort of doing well. As well, so I think that's why Renault will sort of look at that and look at how much sort of progress he's making in that sense and probably put him in tonight. So that is all the lineups, then that is sort of like a few predictions as well for the lineups on the whole who is going to be going where and all of that. And let's move on then into a few of my predictions. Now, honestly, it's going to be a little bit difficult to predict on the whole, you know, that everyone keeps their cards close to their chest, you know, that is completely understandable as well. I don't blame any of the teams for doing that, but I do, I'm going to put. I'm going to put Yanni Tormela as the race winner in tonight's races on the whole. Ahead of Brendan Lee, obviously, it's going to be really, really tight between all of those guys. With Holtzman in P3. Overall, obviously, in like the races they do against each other, obviously, a bit, bit it will be a bit difficult to predict. I don't actually know like the full system and the way it works. Obviously, if it is just qualifying, you know, 18 minute quality, and then a. Uh, I'd imagine it's, again, a 25% race. I know a lot of people want to see longer races, but honestly, they just want quick action, and I think that's probably the best way to go around and do it. So that's what I think the first of oh, the, the races will be. I think in terms of raw pace, it probably is Yoni, Brendan, and then Patrick Holtzman. I do think Salah will finally get a you know a big break in this as well. Well, he's already got a big break. He's racing on the teams, but I do think him and Timp 
will sort of put up a bit of a surprise, I think. A few of the other guys to probably watch if I look further down the order. I think Formula Danny as well will certainly be someone to watch. Um, Donoso as well. I think they, he'll have a lot to prove going into the season. He really, really wants to prove that he can win it, obviously, after he nearly won it last year. So, so close right at the very end. Uh, Schmidl and Stefanko, I would really say just watch out for those guys as well in that Haas car. It'll be interesting. Obviously, they only did one race last year in the F1 Esports, and they, they, they went into... Um, they went on PS4 at Baku, if I'm not mistaken. Did that one, sweat out like hell, and then just I'm pretty certain they just worked together to get through via that one. So I think they'll be interesting to watch as well. Bono and Oli, I think it'll also be very, very interesting to see. And then, obviously, um, Salba and Renault as well, further down the order. I think it'll be really, really interesting to watch those guys. Honestly, I don't really... There, there, there will be no weak drivers on the whole. You know, all of these guys really deserve to beat where they're at. And I'm not going to try and predict, you know, who will be last or anything like that on the whole. Because, honestly, there aren't any clear-cut answers. There's no driver that you think, oh, they didn't really deserve to be there at this stage of the season. So, you know, time will tell, though. The first round will be airing tonight. But yeah, hopefully you know you guys have enjoyed this video. I don't think there's anything really more to say as of right now. Obviously, there's still quite a few unknowns going into this evening. Now, I'm sure probably something will have changed by the time this video does go out. So I can only apologise for that. But yeah, hopefully you know you guys have enjoyed this video. Make sure you do like and subscribe if you're new around here as well. And you do want to see more talks from the F1 Esports Pro Draft series and everything like that. You know, as I said, I'll try and make a video after, well, after the racing tonight. And then after the event in a couple of weeks' time as well. I'll make one before and one after that event in a couple of weeks' time as well. So yeah, hopefully, as I said, you guys are subscribed for that. We're also really, really close to 10k at the moment. So it would be massively, massively appreciated if you guys would hit that subscribe button. But yeah, hopefully for the next one, I'll sort of have a lot more information as well for these guys as well. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. And I'll see you guys next time for a brand new video.